Let us read from Ecclesiastes 9, 13 and downward. Listen to this as I read it to you. Wisdom better than strength. 13. This wisdom have I seen also under the sun, and it seemed great unto me. 14. There was a little city, and few men within it, and there came a great king against it, and besieged it, and built great bulwarks against it. 15. Now there was found in it a poor wise man, and he by his wisdom delivered the city, yet no man remembered that same poor man. 16. Then said I, Wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are not heard. 17 The words of wise men are heard in quiet more than the cry of him that ruleth among fools. 18 Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroyeth much good. The problem with people is they don't understand that those that bring the message of the living God to them are weak because flesh is weak. But the wisdom of God prevails in every situation. And I want you to know that God will use the wisdom that he speaks through your pastor to gain you strength in the time of famine, in the time that you're being attacked, in the time that your mind is restless and cannot sleep. The word of God will come in a way, in a simple way, it's not by performance that the Word of God is executed, and it's not by, by great acts of uh, the appearance of able to speak with great wording, but it is in the abundance of the strength of God that will be ushered in every time that the Word is heard. I'm thinking of a story that happened to me as I walked into a church and we were having great revival. There was a man that stood at the front of the church every time I went in. And I I seemed like I wanted to avoid him constantly because he always uh, had something negative. Not, if he didn't say anything, he was still just had a negative look. And God told me to back up and pray for this gentleman. And he said, I'm going to bless him and I'm going to make an example of him. So I backed up and I said, I want you to come in here in the office with me. And he followed me in there very sullen. And I asked him, I said, do you, you want God to bless you? He said, sure, but I'm so broke, I can't pay attention. Well, undoubtedly, one of the great needs of people are finances. And uh, salvation is one, but they also need to be fed. And Jesus, in his ministry, fed multitudes of people on a few occasions. So we understand that people have to eat and God still feeds people today. And he said he had no money. He said he could not even get to church. He didn't have no gas money. He was making $5 an hour. This is 30 years ago. So it was very low. And, and so I told him, I said, I want you to start paying tithes. Do you pay tithes? He said, I can't afford to. And I, I said, I want you to add $5 to your tithes weekly, and I'm going to pray that God raises you up. Well, remember, God already said he was going to make an example of him, and he also said he was going to bless him. So I figured out what it would be, his tithes would be, when he started making $27 an hour. I got up to that, and I put it on a card. And halfway through it, his ties were around $100, $200 a week. And this is just figuring it, you know, and it was, a, it was a faith figure. Do you know, he said, that's too much money to give that preacher. And I, I said, but look what you're going to be making. He could not see what he was making. And I said, what you're making here is... Your tithes are the amount that you're making today, taking home. And he did not see the effects of God blessing him. So I kept figuring with pencil, doing the math, and taking out the tithe. And then he was making oh, unbelievable amounts of money. And he said, well, that preacher can have that money. 
And that's the way he looked at it, that preacher. And it wasn't that preacher, it was God. That preacher's voice had spoken to his life so many times to help him and try to curb the ridiculous sin that in his life and, and the hopelessness of being surrounded by the cares of life. And he had no way out of it, but the Word of God kept washing him and washing, washing him and washing him. And though it wasn't staying in him, it was washing him. And I'm reminded of a story where a, a young boy was listening to his grandfather uh, talk about how great the preacher was. And the, he looked at his grandson, he said, don't you think he's great, great preacher? You know, he says things about God and, that I never thought of. And the boy said, grandfather, I want you to understand I don't get one thing out of what that preacher is saying. I don't retain anything he says. And the grandfather, who was a basket weaver by trade, looked down at his baskets. One was completely finished, and he said, Grandson, will you get me some water out of the stream and bring it to me in this basket? And the boy jumped up because he loved his grandfather, and he ran to the stream, and he came back, walking back, and looked down in the basket, and there was no water. And he said, you'll have to go faster. And he repeated this process two or three, four times. And on the fourth time, he had some water because he had ran. And it ran out as his grandfather was looking at it. And he said, I'm sorry, grandfather. This basket won't hold water. And he looked down and he said, well, I want to tell you. Look how clean the basket is. And let me tell you, that's exactly what the Word of God does. It washes you and washes you clean. So when I told this man that God was going to bless him, and somewhere the prophetic got to operating it, and me writing and talking to him, turned him around. The Word of God began to wash him through expression of God's Word is how I bless you every which way. And God told him, through the prophetic, that I'm going to give you a job, and you're going to be over the entire plant, and all you're going to do is push buttons and lock it up. After I left that place, or excuse me, just that weekend he came to where I was at, and he came to me and said, I've got my tithes, and he paid them. And, and he told me, he said, but I've got a raise. I got a raise at work. I said, well, how much did you get? He said, I got $12 an hour. God had already started blessing him, had already started pouring it out on him. And so I took that money, took it in a tithe envelope for him and put it in there. And I said, I need you to start doing this. He said, I'll do it. every." And he was to increase it every week by $5, just $5. He called me and he was... He said, uh, later when I had left, he called me. He had my phone number and said, let me tell you something. He said, I went to work the other day and I locked it and I turned three buttons on and I told him to get to work. He was at the point where God had told him he would raise him up to. He was making $26 an hour and all he was doing was pushing three buttons and locking and unlocking the door. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that powerful? A few weeks later, he called me and he said, I'm in with a growl in his voice. And he said, I got to thinking, that's too much money to be given that preacher. You see, you've got to let the word of God wash out all that unbelief, but you, what you build on then is the word of God. And he had, he had gone as far as he could go in his flesh. And he wasn't willing to give God what was his. And all he saw was men using the money that God had blessed him for. God has a greater plan for all of our lives. What you give God, God will give back a lot more. I would rather have 90% blessed than 100% cursed. You need to give God his part. He is sovereign God and he demands it. Amen. And he said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. That devourer 
is very powerful and it can devour everything that you get eat up everything all the curses in the book of Deuteronomy and Leviticus still are intact today Jesus himself said you you pay tithe on mint and rue and he said this you ought to do this is what you got to do to be in the part of the kingdom of God now he told me he couldn't do it and in a few months a few weeks later he lost his job he got thrown out of his house his wife divorced him and I haven't heard from him since but I was so disturbed in my spirit because I said did I fail him did I did I did I do something wrong did I say something you know did I not get my point across and God said, you remember what I told you? And I said, yes, you're going to make, oh, an example of him. Now, I want to ask us, do we want to be an example of good or an example of bad? Because when you get to questioning the methods that God has set up in the earth, you're already headed for the bad. But when you say, God, I love you so much, that I only want you, God will bless you tremendously. And I'm going to end this with this story. There was a woman that was begruntled in a church, and she was paying a large amount of tithing to the church, and she saw herself as the, the big support there. Well, it's, God blessed her, and she was doing her part. But the thing that happened was she began to focus on all the people that were doing stuff that she caught uh, that was a distraction. People on their cell phones, people texting, people writing each other, people getting up, going to the restroom, making noises, just kids screaming. And she told the pastor, she said, I'm going to have to leave. I'm just leaving because of this. She didn't say it was tithing, but it was part of that. She made her excuses. He said, well, I want you to do something for me, sister. You've been such a support here, but I want you to do something for me before you leave. And she said, well, what is it, Pastor? He said, I want you to take a full glass of water, and while service is going on, I want you to walk around three times around the sanctuary. Three times, she said, a full glass of water? Yes, ma'am. I'll do it for you, but this is the last act of kindness I'll do for this church. As she walked around it on the third time, uh, she sat down and waited to see why he wanted her to do that. And you know what? He came walking up to her and he said, Did you walk around the church with the water like I asked you? Yes, I did three times. And I didn't spill a drop. What, well, were anybody t was anybody talking? Was anybody mumbling? Was anybody uh, texting as she had told him why she was leaving? You know what she said? No, I didn't have time to look at them trying to keep the water in the glass. It's simple. If we'll focus on the right thing, we'll get the job done and stay in our place. Amen. Get your eyes on the right thing and stay full of God. God bless you. Today is your day. To declare a revolution on all things that oppose you. Wake up. Get up and pray up. Wash your face. Dress yourself. And meet this today as you would every day the rest of your life with victory. And with victory you shall overcome all obstacles. Find you somebody to minister to, to pray for, and help be delivered of all the things that's bothering them. And God will see to it that you are taken care of. God bless you.